Hi, uh, Nathan. Uh, end of day six today of, of sailing the boat. Uh, just can you talk us through from the dock out and uh, the little tutu down the harbour there where we couldn't keep close because of the speed limit? Yeah, it was um, southwester today, so lighter, puffier, sort of six to 12 knots, and you know, it's probably really tricky conditions for these boats because six knots you're fully underpowered, not foiling, and the next minute you got 12 knots and you know the thing's ripping, and so. Um, you know, it's definitely easy to sail these boats in stable conditions and that's why we sort of ventured out of the harbour and tried to get off Takapuna and it was just like a building southwest. It was flat water but, you know, puffy and tricky. It certainly looked very stable. Uh, we're still in the autopilot mode. Are we, are we having any input on, on that while we're sailing the boat? No, so the boat's still 100% one design configuration and I think today will probably mark the day that you know we'd say it's commissioned and signed off and then we can hopefully start to move into some custom parts on the boat. It's been you know really cool to have the other teams down here at the moment, you know, looking over the boat and you know watching the sailing today and you know chatting to um, Slingers who was here the other day and Hendo from Ineos, you know. I think they're pretty impressed with the package and pretty impressed that you know gonna everyone's gonna get one of these boats as it's working right now and you know, there's been lots of little software upgrades and improvements on the autopilot and you know, it's all trending in the right direction now and I think um, you know, we're pretty comfortable to say that it's, it's in good shape. It's ready to go. Nice. Now we saw just one jib today, number two, and that, we, we, that was enough in the light stuff to get you foiling or would you, you know, would you, would you have gone up a, up a size if you were... If yeah, you... we didn't really want to waste too much time today switching around the jibs. It was meant to build, so we went with the two. Um, but sort of the further we sailed offshore, the lighter it got. So it was definitely somewhere between the two. I think once you're up and rumbling, eight, nine and above, the two is sweet, but sub 10 knots, you probably put the bigger sail up there and just get a little bit more wet. Got you, got you. Um, when you're driving back to windward, you've got no vision to leeward, do you? So you're all relying on comms and it's all just audible from the, the guy to leeward. Yeah. If your comms gear goes down and you're ripping along, <laughs> you, can you shout? You, can no, you, hear, you, you really no, can't no, hear you, anything. You rely on comms because um, you can't really, you obviously can't see the lured, you can't see the people to lured, and the, the motor and the pumps on board powering all the systems is so noisy that if you take your ear cups off, you, you can't hear anything either. So, um, yeah, if you have a comms fail, you, you best, right. best to park <laughs> the boat right. and, and get it fixed. I understand. Now, we're, we're told that in the rules we're allowed a camera about two metres off water level. I'm presuming the guy to Leward is going to be using that to, to look for puffs on the water. Is that something that you guys are going to put onto the 40 for your development phase? I'm sure we'll add some cameras to the boat for, for developing and you know, looking at to Leward and to foils. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that when you are sitting to Leward, um, you get a really good vision of the apparent wind. So the, the slot between the, slot. the jib and the mast. So like downwind you've got really good vision of the pressure what you're sailing into when you're to lure it and what you're going to jive into and the same upwind so like the guys to lure it actually probably have almost a better picture of what's going on than the guys to win because they see much more of the and, apparent wind and so when you're going through a maneuver obviously changing roles going from driving it to being the the, the uh, big picture person on board there's, that, there's, there's a bit of a you know handover kind of time for sure for there's that. a lot of handovers you know like the guys driving are sharing the driving and communication on the wind and the traffic, you know, particularly in Auckland, there's plenty of traffic. Um, and then all the autopilot functions are all sitting on the dashboard there. So, you know, sometimes you're adjusting the trim of the boat, sometimes you're adjusting the sink, sometimes you're adjusting the cant, and you, you do a handover kind of every tack. And that's what we've been trying to sort out over the last few weeks is who does what, when and where, because, um, you know, it'd be nice that we could sort of give a bit of a basic playbook to the teams, but especially for the, the youth and the Women's America's Cup, we want to kind of give them, hey, if you're going to sail the boat, we would recommend this doing it this way. And uh, we're still not there yet, you know, there's so many different ways you could do it, but um, you know, I think the less handovers you do, the less likely to have a mistake. Nathan, thank you so much. No worries. See you next week. <laughs>